Welcome to the physics course. This topic is about dimensions of physical quantities and dimensional analysis. All of the physical quantities can be expressed as a combination of seven fundamental or base quantities. In physics and mathematics, the dimension of a mathematical space or object is defined as the number of minimum number of coordinates that is needed to specify any point within that space. Let's take a one dimensional number line for example. We have, let's take the example let's take the example of a number line. We have numbers on the number line and we take for example the number 5. We just need one point on the number line to define its location on the number line. That is why a line is called a one-dimensional object. If we take a cylinder or a sphere or any surface, it is called a two-dimensional surface because we need two coordinates to specify a point on it. Here is an example of a sphere. When we consider a globe, we usually have latitude and longitude. These are the two coordinates required to specify a point on the sphere. This is an example of a square. It is also a two-dimensional surface. When we take, when we take a shape like a cube, a cylinder, or a sphere, it is called a three-dimensional object because we need three coordinates to specify a point within it. Now, for example, this shape of a cube, we need three port points to define any point inside the cube. We have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. We will show you the representation of dimension 0 to 5, but most of the cases in physics we will be using only the first three dimensions. The 0 dimension is defined as a single point, a line is one dimension, a square is two dimensions, a cube is three dimensions, and a hypercube is four dimensions. Another thing to note is the number of dimensions relates to the number of points. When you double the, for every corresponding point in one dimension, the next dimension has a double that amount of points. For example, you have a, to make a line, you have to have a corresponding point, so you get two points. Similarly, when you go to the second dimension, you have a line with two points, and then when you replicate those two points, you get four to make a square. To make a cube, you have eight points. To make a hypercube in four dimensions, you have 16 points. And to have a fifth dimension object, you will have to replicate these points, so it will be 32 points. Now we will show what a four dimensional and a five dimensional object looks like when it's mapped onto a two dimensional screen. The four-dimensional object is also called a tesseract. This is a representation of a fifth dimension object. The base quantities are known as dimensions of the physical world and they are denoted with a square bracket. The most common ones are length, mass and time. Length is denoted by the letter L, M is used for mass and T is used for time. 
amps in A is used for the dimensions of electric current in amps. K in kelvins is the temp, uh, dimension for temperature. Candela CD or the phi symbol is used for luminous intensity that is the amount of light and the amount of substance is denoted with in moles which is represented as mol. The number of dimensions of a physical quantity are denoted by the powers in which the base quantities are raised to to get a derived quantity. For example area has two dimensions of length which is length and breadth so you have got length multiplied by length so it is also denoted as L squared therefore area can be denoted as L squared and the dimension of area is two dimensions and the other dimensions of mass and time are zero so if you denote area in terms of mass length and time it will become area is equal to m to the zero power l to the second power and time to the zero power similarly volume has three dimensions length breadth and height so volume is denoted as l times l times l which is l cubed so this is how you can write it as volume is equal to L cubed. Another example is velocity. Velocity is the change in location over time and change in location is also called displacement. So you have L divided by T. Now since T is the denominator, it is one upon T. So it is T to the negative one and L is to the first power and m is to the zero power. So it is said that velocity has zero dimensions of mass, one dimension in length and negative one in time. Now we take an example of acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time and change in velocity is the display change in displacement over time so it becomes displacement over time squared therefore acceleration has dimensions of l to the first power and t to the minus two power so you can say that the dimension of acceleration is one dimension in length and minus two dimensions in time and zero dimension in mass so it will be m to the zero power l to the one power and t to the minus two power is acceleration The dimensional formula is the denotation that is used like m to the 0, l to the 1, t to the minus 2 for example for acceleration. This is known as the dimensional formula for acceleration. When the dimensional formula is expressed in the form of an equation, it is known as a dimensional equation. The dimensional formulas of various physical quantities are shown in the following table. Here we have the physical quantities, for example, area, volume, density, and the expressions in dimensions, for example, length times breadth for area, volume is area multiplied by height, and here is the dimensional formula. For example, area is L squared, volume is L cubed, and so on for a lot of the physical quantities. That is all for this topic of dimensions 
and dimensional analysis. We hope you enjoyed this topic.